Welcome to the homestead. Today we're talking about garden records for success. Today I want to give you some reasons why good garden records can help you to be very successful in your gardening the following year. When I think about gardening, the first thing that I thought about was, oh, I'm going to plant seeds, I'm going to watch things grow, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And that is true. It's very fun to see things come to life and to grow and mature and be able to harvest off of them. But I also know, having already been at three different locations, I know that every location is a little bit different and if I keep records that kind of help me, I could actually have sped up some of my successes and production at the different places where I've lived. So my goal in transitioning to a new location this year is to keep better records so that next year I can find my garden having better success than this year. The first thing I wanna make sure to record is seed starting. When I plant something, I'm going to be writing down when I planted it in my calendar. This is where I'm going to keep most of my records this year. Um, I found this one on Amazon, I'll link it down below. You can use anything, you could use a calendar, you could use a notebook, anything that's going to just help you to organize your thoughts and keep track of things throughout the course of the year. This particular one has great lines um, and a monthly spread as well as a weekly spread so I can write things down and keep track of it all in one place. I wrote down when I started my seeds and then I also wrote down when they started to germinate. The reason for that is because I have one variety of lettuce right now that's not coming up. So I know that something's going on with that batch of seeds. Either the seed's too old or something happened and it's not viable anymore. So I'm going to run some further tests to see if I can get any kind of production or germination out of it. If not, I know just to go ahead and toss that particular container of seed. That's something that you can know by keeping good records about what you're planting and how long it takes for it to come up. The second reason garden records can help with success is succession planting. Since I'm the only one eating off of my garden, I don't need everything coming to maturity and being ready to harvest at one time, unless I'm planning to do a lot of preserving of that particular item. So I like to do succession planting so I can have a little bit throughout the course of the season, and that just helps me to have a continuous supply of fresh produce rather than having it um, all come to maturity at one time. So I like to record when I have planted my first batch so that I know two weeks later, oh, it's time to plant another round of um, broccoli or cabbage or whatever it is that I'm trying to succession plant. The third reason garden records can help your success is that it's going to help you to know what to plant. So I like to keep track of which varieties of items I'm planting. And then as we go through the course of the year, I can keep track of which ones were really productive and which ones were maybe not as productive. Even though I've been in the same town with my last three locations, every place has been a little bit different and there's been a variety of a particular thing that might work at one place, but it didn't really work well at the other place. So by keeping track of what's working well, I'm able to know what to purchase for the following year and get that production a little bit faster. The fourth reason, we're on number four, is uh, garden records will help me to know where to plant items. Again, I've been in three different locations in the same grow zone and every location worked a little bit differently. Here, I have a little microclimate where I've got a small yard, there's a fence on either side, it kind of helps to contain the heat within my yard area. And so during the summer, things like peppers work really well here where they didn't really work well at my last location. However, because of the way that the other houses around me are, um, the size of them and where they sit in relationship to my garden, as well as some trees that are across the way, I don't really have a great area for winter gardening here because everything starts to shade over in October, November, and I don't get any more sun until the spring. So by keeping records, you're going to know where to plant things 
and what kinds of gardening are going to work for your space. Maybe you might want to draw a little map so that you know, okay, I planted tomatoes over here and they were really productive, they did really well. Or maybe I planted peas over here, but it got way too hot and too sunny, they would have done better in this other location. By keeping track of that, this year it's going to help you to improve your success next year in your garden and the fifth reason garden records can be helpful in your success is that you're going to know what kinds of pests to be on the lookout for now this is not something that i have done in the past but it's something that i'm looking forward to doing this year again in the three locations that i've been in and lived at there have been different pests that have shown up at each location, even though it's in the same grow zone and the same area. I like to do organic gardening, and so I don't wanna be putting pesticides on my plants, and I don't wanna be doing anything that would be putting nasty stuff into my soil or onto the produce that I'm going to be eating. And so, because I try to be more careful of that, I do have to be on the lookout for pests and try to deal with them in an appropriate manner. So this year, one of the things I'm going to be writing down is what kind of pests I find and what I am able to use that's effective for um, deterring them on my plants. If I can catch the problem early and I have a solution that's going to work right away, it's really going to save me a lot of time, hassle, and frustration later down the road. Um, Whereas if I don't pay attention to it and I let the problem get out of control, the next thing you know, it's a disaster. So I might be speaking from experience here just a little bit. So I'm gonna again be writing down when do I first see a pest show up and what am I able to do to combat that particular situation and take care of that. I guess the same could be true if you see a particular disease um, show up on your plants as well. If you can kind of figure out when that came, what was the weather like, how can you handle it, did you have to pull the whole plant out, that's going to really help you to know as well the following year what kinds of varieties you might want to plant or um, what location you might want to have them in. So those are things that I want to record. Um, again, I didn't think about adding this to the list, but kind of a bonus item might be what the weather is doing because there are so many variables on when you should plant and what you should plant. And the weather is definitely going to play a huge role in that. I mean, we had unseasonably cold temperatures and, and a weird snowstorm just, you know, last week. So that's something that we wouldn't typically have. And if it had occurred at a different point in time, could have really impacted the garden here. And I know it has for some of the farmers farther south. So just keep track of some of these things and be mindful of them. And I think that that will help you to see greater success the following year in your garden. If this information was helpful to you, please click that like button as well as subscribe. And I am looking forward to seeing you back here in the next one. Bye everyone.